Associates and the recapturing of funds through federal and state agencies and other sources. Judge at the request of the commissioner's court, uh, we put this item on there also under the drainage district to have an overview. I know that y'all have gotten some responses back from the International Boundary and Water Commission, but I was asked again to make a brief presentation on the status of the levy system, and then Mr. Hollis Rudge and Associates will give their presentation. As we mentioned uh, several weeks ago, the IBWC has not completed the, all of the reconstruction on the levy. by the International Boundary and Water Commission. We turned over those three, three projects over to the IBWC right after the American Recovery Act came into place in which the local community had been funding the reconstruction of the levees. But since the federal government had gotten the American Recovery Act, we turned over three segments back to the IBWC to stop the funding from Hidalgo County on. They completed two of them. They had one under construction. They ran into some difficulties technically on the site. And for about a year and a half, they've kept going back and forth with the contractor. They finally issued a stop order to the contractor, and they responded back to the court or to the judge, identifying that they were going to put that one segment back out for bid again, and that they would complete those improvements hopefully within the next two years. But during this time, we still have an issue on the levee system that we have a potential hole in it, which is in Peñitas, which is at the Irrigation District Number 1 pump house. So it is important that we continue the pressure on the IBWC for two things. One, to complete their obligation associated with it. And two, in the meeting that we had at the judge's office several months back with the International Boundary Water Commissioner, where he stated that he would assist us in whatever he could to modify the existing MOU to give us the ability to seek legislative remedies on recovering of our money. However, he said that he could not do that because the project was all completed. We spent six months identifying that the project was not completed. We brought photographs. We sent correspondence back to the IBWC showing that what they had said about the project being completed was not correct. So at this point, we stand with the segment of the levy not completed, which is under the IBWC work, work orders. Secondly, the existing MOU as identified between Hidalgo County and the IBWC has not been completed. So the opportunity, in my opinion, is still there based on what the commissioner said that he would work with Hidalgo County to modify the existing MOU if the project was not completed. Uh, at the request, I said, of the commissioner's court, we have Mr. Hollis Rudledge to give you all a quick briefing as to where they're at. I'll be more than happy to answer any other technical questions associated with this project. Before you move on. Yes, sir. You're talking about project that was supposed there could be no IBWC's responsibility, yes, sir. right? Yes, sir. And All that, of it was IBWC. What else was federal? They, in particular, this particular section, and uh, we were being misled <laughs> by IBWC in terms of project had been completed or not completed. That, that is correct, Mr. Hundred percent. We had briefed this board and identified that the project was not completed. Y'all have correspondence from the IBWC, IBWC saying that the project was completed until we did the research and presented the facts. Now they've come back and said, oh, that has not been completed and we're issuing a stop order, but we will get back and finish that piece of it. And that is all in documentation that has been going back and forth between the IBWC and this commissioner's court and the judge's office. So does our area still have a serious potential of flooding? Yes, sir. We're at very high risk because of that one segment of the levy that has not been completed, which is at the Benita structure. And that's after we spent $60 million and the government spent $200 million. And more than that, because the American Recovery Act gave the IBWC an additional close to $300 million. Half a million? Half a million? Well, again, for the record, you're talking about the... Everything in blue? 
western side of Davo, which is at Benita, which is where irrigation is number one, pulled water out of the river and bring water into Mission, McAllen, Edinburgh. So that channel that's there is the irrigation channel by gravity going to the northeast. And that is the same channel that during Beulah collected all the water from the western side of the county and overflowed into Mission and McAllen around 2nd Street and 10th Street. I think the council I'm sorry, the can, what did you say? I didn't get to hear that last part. That is where the canals overflow. The canal serves as a river judge around the Benitas area. Irrigation district one's canal is below ground. So mm -hmm. it's not elevated like you see here. So any water can get into it and will come down the irrigation canal like a river, which brings the water in, which is the area of flooded the canal and flooded mission during Beulah, because the canal itself is serving in the river of all the water that was raining up the Hoya watershed. What does FEMA have to say about this? We had FEMA coming down here last month. It was FEMA coming down here and the commissioner coming down here. However, they were not able to make it because their physical year ended. And they are now scheduled to come back with new dates. I've asked both the Region 6 Director of FEMA from Denton and the IBWC Commissioner to come and make a, a presentation to the general public, which is to this board, the Drainage Advisory Board, the Tri-County Advisory Board, to for the citizens to hear directly from the federal representative, not just second-hand knowledge from us, as to what their concerns are, what their problems are. You know, we were told, uh, what was it, about a year ago that the project had been completed. Mm -hmm. How did we find out that it had not? I'll let Mr. Rutledge elaborate on that. <clears throat> Judge, for the record, Hollis Rutledge. Um, when we were approaching the three-prong uh, approach of trying to recapture monies, which are you have in your possession. One of them was le a legislative uh, initiative. The other was an administrative initiative. That is to say, to communicate with the Secretary of State, in particular Secretary of State Hillary Clinton at the time. Um, and the other was to identify additional monies uh, in others, from other sources to address the drainage projects that were originally uh, identified in the bond issue. When we were uh, communicating with the Secretary of State's office, uh, Cornyn's office had been in communication with them, and during that conversation, Judge, uh, they alluded to uh, the MOU that was signed by, uh, by the county uh, drainage district where it, uh, they had a problem with. And they had a problem with it because the MOU as it, in its present form, uh, in their interpretation, indicated that we would relinquish any effort for reimbursement. What they did not know, it was relinquish uh, the original $10 million, not when it expanded into another, another $50 million that was expended by the county. So at that point, they, they told the Corning's people, is, look, uh, we're not in a position right now to recommend to the secretary to issue a directive to IBWC for a reimbursement, which is one of the issues that you and I have been discussing to try to get, try to get the secretary before she left to, to do so. So we're not in the position right now to recommend to, to the secretary to issue such a directive until such time as you clarify this MOU. At that point, that's when we decided to communicate again with IBWC. That's when we decided that we needed to uh, address the MOU amendment process to the commissioner. That's when we had the commissioner in your office, in the law offices uh, last October, when uh, he uh, told you and everybody in that room that he was going to do everything he could to look at that MOU to see if there was a possibility to amend it. You issued the letter to him in reference to that conversation we had, and uh, he responded in December. In the December letter, he what said, December of, uh, of, of this past year, <coughs> in the December letter, he said uh, to you, he said that he had looked into the, the matter 
and that they could not amend the MOU because he had checked with all of the contracting officers that indicated to him that they had certified all of the projects in the scope of work dealing with the MOU and that the, all of the projects had been completed. That prompted us then to look into the, to the situation as to whether they in, in, in fact were completed. <clears throat> when we decided to do a review of that, we encountered some issues that we had heard about uh, and we actually talked to the contractor that had been hired. Which is? Uh, McAllen Construction. Okay. And uh, we found out that in true in fact, not only had the project not been completed, but they had found apparently some geotechnical soil problems on the ground that had not been detected originally in the construction plans and specifications. There had been a series of change orders uh, over a period of time, and then they put a halt to McAllen Construction's uh, effort to decipher what they were going to do. At that point, they decided at the government's convenience to terminate the contract with the contractor and start all over again and, uh, and, and do uh, an additional research and geotechnical uh, field work, redo the construction plans, and then rebid it. And at that point, um, when, when we issued the letter that, the recent letter that we discussed about a month or so ago, where we found this issue, and you addressed it to the commissioner and said, we have reason to believe. When you say we found, who is the we? Uh, Oh, Mr. Godfrey and myself, yeah. and in conjunction with, right. uh, with um, the, uh, the, the contractor at the time. We determined that it, was, it, 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 it needed immediate attention by this court and yourself. We brought it to you. Uh, we drafted a letter, which you ultimately were authorized to sign, to respond to the December letter and telling the commissioner, commissioner, in essence, we have evidence to believe that the projects are not complete. And we cited specifically the uh, Edinburgh Penitas pump levy station project. He responded to you uh, this past August. And in that letter, he did, they did acknowledge, they did acknowledge that, actually the September letter, they did acknowledge that um, the actual Edinburgh Penitas project had not been completed and acknowledged the fact that they were having to issue another set of construction plans and specifications. But more serious than that, judge, commissioners, is that they indicate that it's going to take them another two years to finish. So to, to me, that means that we're in the tail end of this hurricane season, and now we're looking at an additional two hurricane seasons from today. You asked in that letter that was drafted to the commissioner that you consequently wanted a meeting with him, with FEMA, with the Corps of Engineers, with the congressional delegations, and all parties concerned because you felt it, which is true, the county felt that it was necessary to address this issue to get some answers. Because now we're talking about massive flooding that will affect people, property, and possibly an economic impact on the county. So he did respond to you, but uh, unfortunately, he didn't, personally, he did not respond to you. He had uh, someone in his organization respond to you to admit that, in true in fact, the, the project had not been completed and it was going to take another two years to finish, and that it was really not necessary to not, not only not have a meeting, but not even have a conference call. So, how is based on your understanding of uh, the contract documents or the memorandums of understanding, who in the world had the responsibility to? 
to inspect and tell us that the project was in fact completed or not? Well, it's certainly a total responsibility of the federal government, Judge. I mean, you gave the project back to them. It is in federal property. It is a federal uh, responsibility, and it's their responsibility then to inform. Now, keep in mind that we've had correspondence, and by the way, we have uh, members of the staff of the congressional delegation that's here. Most of all of the delegation, congressional delegation staff have been involved with us in this effort. They've been completely briefed. In fact, some of them have actually been at the site, by the way including Congressman Cuellar, because that's his district. But what um, I'm trying to tell you is that you actually had correspondence between the IBWC over a period of time, and they never admitted on, uh, that there was an incomplete project until you brought it to their attention in the last letter. Judge, if, if I may ask a question. Godfrey, this is going to be more geared down to you. Uh, when we first looked at the project and you started identifying all the legs and who was going to do what, mm -hmm. When it came down to this leg and the federal government said they wanted to be responsible for it, it's their system. Mm -hmm. Is there a valuation to the work, that leg, uh, in regards to construction and design? Uh, what is the value right now? Probably about seven to eight million dollars. Seven to eight million dollars. And in this case, obviously, uh, in this letter that, that Hollis is referencing, two years is, is, is far too long. We, we understand how the federal government works, uh, not as fast as uh, you know, most day-to-day -day businesses. Our county government. Well, or, or count. <laughs> Two years, that's a grave issue. I mean, it, the situation is extremely grave. I, I understand the congressional pressure that needs to be placed upon the IBWC by local and congressional leaders uh, to get behind the issue. Obviously, we even have a lack of response from the IBWC. I think at the end of the day, and, and it's not something that I'm contemplating uh, that, the, that the board considers, but right now, uh, a timeline for redesign, a timeline for construction. They're saying it's two years. That's two years too late. Um, I don't know if there's something that could be generated in an agreement form where, again, as the initial <laughs> approach on the reimbursement, uh, obviously not move forward mm -hmm. until all the I's are dotted, T's are crossed. I, I, don't, I think it's something we got to comprehensively look at and how we can quickly address the issue. Uh, first of all, we don't have the authority to go in there. That's correct, sir. Um, and that is why the original MOU developed, because without authority from the International Boundary Water Commission, the federal government, we do not have the ability nor the authority to work on their right of way or expend any money on their so project. So between you and Hollis, what would be the aggressive approach in dealing with the federal government and the IBWC uh, on resolving this as, as promptly as possible? Uh, Commissioner, I couldn't give you an answer. There's, that agency is such a quagmire. Uh, after additional research that was done, it appears that the IBWC, even though it's under the Secretary's Department, the only one they report to is the President of the United States. And that is through the research that was done by a law firm on your behalf, Judge, out of D.C., responding back and identifying that the only one that the IBWC responds to is the President of the United States. Uh, as far as the timeline, Commissioners, I believe it is, it is ludicrous to say it'll be two years. I believe the engineers that have worked on the project, which were Dannenbaum, could probably put a set of plans together back within 90 days, putting it back out for bid. Uh, the contractor that has worked on it, which is McGallan Construction, is probably one of the most knowledgeable of the area, probably one of the few contractors of quality and reputation to handle a massive project of that size or that type of uh, complexity. But two years, I believe, is, is completely out of context on time. When were we told or led to believe that the project was complete? They never alluded to it until we brought it to their attention. They const consistently said, once we met with a com you met with a commissioner, right. and you issued the letter, and he responded in December, he said, we can't amend it because all projects have been completed. That's when it prompted us to do a little bit more re review of the, of, of, of the projects, and this is what we found. So then, once we solidified our position that, in true and in fact, there was a legitimate concern and a legitimate issue here, that's what prompted us to then bring it to your attention. You issued the letter. He, they responded to you this September, and they finally admitted that the, the Edinburgh-Panitas uh, project had not been completed. Now, having said that, 
uh, the, as I said earlier, the congressional delegation has been in complete uh, uh, in, uh, involvement in this process. And they are ready to stand with you all, the, the congressman and the senator, to, to, to try to follow up with the request that you, you asked them in the first place. The last letter you sent them, you, you said you want an immediate meeting with all parties. And that's what needs to take place. It's no longer at our level. How can we set it up? I think that uh, the congressional delegation, some of which uh, representatives are here, they're, they've already made some, uh, some initial uh, uh, inquiries as to doing that pending your own decision. Who should be present at this meeting? I think that, uh, as it, you indicated in the letter that uh, you signed, I think that all parties should be involved. The congressional delegation representatives, the IBWC, FEMA, Corps of Engineers, uh, the county officials, and, and keep in mind that uh, you have some uh, local mayors, uh, cities that are now involved, and uh, business people that are involved, and I think they need to, need to be brought into where, the, where should the meeting be conducted? Judge, that's your call. It could be here, it could be in Washington, but I know that the congressional delegation has been, is ready to, to pull the trigger and, and making sure that they understand that in, in view of the fact that they say that it's not, that merit not even a conference call, that, uh, that they should convey your, your all sentiments that a meeting has to take place. Judge, commissioners, uh, I have Mr. Louis Jones here from Datamom Engineering which were the principal engineers designed on the project. And I believe he's got some comments for, for this board on that particular item. Mr. Jones. Thank you, Godfrey. Uh, Louis Jones, uh, Danabom for the record. To kind of clarify what uh, Godfrey was saying is when, if you remember, we finished the work, turned it over, and it was accepted by IBWC, and then they took over that piece of the project, and then we had the big flood that came through. And with all of that, what happened is McAllen Construction couldn't dewater the, the uh, soils to build it as we had projected it would be built. And we were in con conversation back and forth with IBWC, although we weren't under con you know, contract anymore with them because we're with the drainage district. And we had some ideas, but since we weren't an official representative of them, you know, they had just hired three consultants of basically United States wide, and they had some consultant out of California doing some work. So, what are we talking about as being needed? Was, I, I went out there with the mayor of Peñitas, and there's a solid concrete wall on one side of Right. It, if you look, you know, you have the Peñitas pump station, which right. is a historic structure. And when we first looked at that, we were going to try to tie the wall into that structure, but the structure is, a, is not structurally sound enough to be able to withstand a flood, plus it's historic. So we moved out in front of it, and we were going to basically build a levee out there with a wall on top of it, and we had to cross that channel. But what happened is that channel has been there for so many years, all the soil under it is saturated, and when we had that big flood, it even made it worse, and so when McAllen was out there trying to dewater so they could take that muck out and put in good soil, they couldn't get it dewatered, and they kept trying and trying, and they called us, and, and we had several conversations, but we were kind of out of the loop since we weren't really representing that, but uh, we had some pretty good ideas of what we needed to do, and, and Godfrey's right, within 90 days, you could have the the plans or the fix for it and you know and, okay. and get a contractor out there so last time that we we were up with the USIBWC I don't know a few months ago uh, really for RMA uh, activities and one of the, the their guys told me that said look we'll probably be calling you in October we may do an emergency deal to hire you guys to come fix it but I hadn't heard from him, so uh, you know we may see where they're at with that. But had they just allowed the drainage district, you know, to to solve it, we would have solved it right then and there, and it would have saved them a bunch of money. But at that point in time, you know, they had their own group, and and we were pretty much out of it. So that's kind of what I know right. about. Are there any lately. questions from uh, members of the court? 
What do you propose, Godfrey? Should uh, I set up that meeting? Basically, I propose that we, one way or another, force the IBWC commissioner to come to the table, to sit across the table from the elected officials and explain to them why he lied. Okay. Well, we don't want to phrase it that way. Well, I think that's what it is, Judge. He lied. His staff did not give him the proper information. Apparently, he didn't have the ability to go check himself. The facts are there. He told y'all and told us it was done. We showed pictures that it was not done. You sent him a letter, and he didn't even have the courtesy to respond to you. He had his engineer respond. And I think it's inappropriate. Well, I agree with you that it's inappropriate. But why don't we go about getting uh, some dates, get him committed to some dates, and uh, so that we can have a meeting, and we ought to have it down here. I agree 100 percent. I think we should have the meeting down over here. Hopefully, Mr. Rudgett and his associates will be able to get the congressional leadership, either the congressman to come down here, preferably them, so they can look at eye-to-eye -eye contact, because this thing is just continually dragging on and dragging on, and the only one that's at risk is our community. We put a bunch of money into this program already. We helped them get the money to repair it, and it is just unbelievable they respond back that it will be another two years. Mr. Jones, which was the engineer of record on this project, is telling you himself that he tried to recommend a fix. The bureaucratic system did not allow him to work with him. He concurred that the project could be completed or redesigned in 90 days. It's not a two-year project, Judge. So again, I would recommend that we move forward in asking Hollis and our congressional leadership to set up a meeting down here so everybody can sit across the table from each other. Set it up. Well, you know, my concern has been that uh, nobody seemed at the time did not understand or not able to tell us who was in charge of IBWC. If you recall, we made one or several visits to D.C. And now I'm hearing that uh, Secretary is responsible, but no, he's not. <laughs> it's president. I think that the secretary should be involved in this meeting, Judge. That, that who? That the secretary of state be some way involved in this meeting. If we had this meeting and they said, well, we need to go with the secretary, it's going to take another God knows how long. So let's put him in the loop and get everybody uh, in line. On that, I, I'm not disagreeing with you, Judge, but I turn that over to Mr. Rutledge. He knows more of how the system works up in Washington than I do. As to well, Hollis. <clears throat> Certainly, we can attempt that. Uh, as I said, we've already we've already uh, have the, the the entire congressional delegation very much involved and very briefed in this thing and we can certainly bounce that off uh, them and see and see uh, whether they can they can do that one thing is for sure that we don't want to delay that meeting no. because that mm -hmm. that that the correspondence the correspondence that the judge sent was very plain and very direct they he wants a meeting with IBWC they responded that it didn't merit a meeting and of course we we take we beg to differ so, uh, if you wish, with your direction, I, you know, the Congress, some of the congressional representatives are here, we can certainly work towards a, a time that would be amenable to everybody. All right. Uh, any other comments? Let, let's get some dates uh, that the court can agree on and, and propose them to them sometime this month, see if uh, they'll accept any of those dates. We'll do, sir. Judge, my comments are just going to be, I think it, there has to be a comprehensive approach. I mean, you're talking about a $7 million uh, investment on a structure that doesn't belong to us. We're talking billions of dollars that we're trying to preserve. It's a federal responsibility, but it has a local impact. And we have to be aggressive on meeting as soon as possible. Also, to put everything on the table to figure out how we're going to address this issue so that we can resolve it as fast as possible. Yes, sir. I'm just an observer, and it's very uh, hard to understand. But the way I see it, 
is we can bite the bullet and do it ourselves and it's spend, and we'll spend our own money and never, ever expect to get paid back because we won't. Uh, I can remember when we were so generous and gave that money for FEMA and everything. everybody told me, oh yes, they're going to pay us back. I never believed it. I still don't. Uh, I don't like dealing with the federal government because I think they don't care about us. They don't see it. I, would, I, I won't say that about our representatives that are here. I know they're from here and know, but the people in Washington do not know about us, don't care. Um, I don't think a meeting is going to get anything done, gentlemen. I, I don't have a whole lot of faith in that, especially since IBWC doesn't even want to come. Uh, I, I, we've got a choice here. We, we either say we need to take care of our own and make sure this does not ever flood so we've got to fix it, or we wait around for somebody who I don't think is ever going to help us. Sorry. I just, uh, that's what I can get from all of this. And I feel sorry for people like Hollis who has to go to Washington and deal with those people. You walk out of there not knowing and, and whether you, you know could the, believe it or not. What's the cost, the approximate cost of this project? I'm not talking about the plans. I'm talking about the no, plans. I'm talking about the, the estimated that we had before, I believe, was seven and a half million dollars. Ms. Jones, do you recall? It was about seven and a half million dollars. And basically, it was going to be a dual funding from the IBWC and Department of Homeland Security to fix that segment. So Godfrey, 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 is there? Seven, and seven, eight million. Yes, sir. Godfrey, is there still money there? Obviously, they pulled out. They took responsibility of this project. Mm -hmm. Money was set aside for this project. Mm -hmm. Is there money, federal money right now, for construction I, I, of this segment? I couldn't tell you if they have any money left from the American Recovery Act. I mean, Act. that's the thing to talk about is in the immediate meeting, is there you do it or we'll do it. We mobilize faster. We can initiate it. There's federal dollars attached to this construction project. You know, I, we got to. I, I don't know how much money they have from the $500 million they got from the American Recovery Act. There's reason to believe, though, that they still have money left over. Well, that's why we need recovery. to communicate with them at this meeting. Yeah. Yes, sir. All right. Let's set it up as soon as we can. I'm not sure which one of you two gentlemen wants to take that. I will coordinate with Mr. Rutledge's office to get the congressmen on board to give us some dates and forward letters out to them uh, and CC all the board. Yeah, perhaps some of the congressmen uh, might be able to make it to that meeting. Yes, sir. Will do, sir. All right. Sir. Thank you. Next item. Sir. Next item. Uh, presentation on existing drainage movements at and around San Carlos area. Judge Commissioners, uh, Ms. Townsend had brought up some discussion at our drainage advisory board that she had gotten some communication from some of the residents regarding the San Carlos. Yeah, and I'm waiting for them to change it. And uh, I'll go ahead and let Ms. Townsend elaborate a little bit before I go into the presentation. Ms. Townsend? Thanks. No, I was just happy. I sit on the advisory board of the drainage committee, but I, I was just happy to see somebody came up to me and said it was nice to see the ponds worked and we did not get flooded out in San Carlos like before. So I said, oh my goodness, we ought to tell the people so they'll know that we are spending money on drainage that works. <laughs> I'm sorry, could you repeat so, that? <laughs> <laughs> so Commissioner, what, what I did was go out there and, and Commissioner Joseph, thank you very much for allowing us to go out there and move on the project. And we have some picture, pictures for y'all on the what we call the Dicker Pond and uh, the, the secondary pond on the, on the south side. And to give you an idea, if you see up there, there was an excavation done over the past four years or five years being completed during Commissioner Joseph Palacio's term. And the detention ponds were dug. And what you look up there on the screen is the Dickerson Pond, which is looking at it from the southwest corner. You see where there's still water ponding in there from the last rains that we had. Next slide. You can see across the area that there's still water ponding in it. Basically what these ponds did was we dug a hole deeper than San Carlos. So the water goes to a hole and gets out of another hole. So <laughs> the deeper the hole is, the more water you can get out of other holes in the area. So this particular project was, 
was constructed or being finalized was Commissioner Joseph Palacio started during Commissioner Garza's as part of the original bond COs that the county issued out. Continue, please. You can see again some additional water still ponding in the area. And these are from the last rains we just received in the past two weeks. These pictures were taken about three or four days ago. These are part of the channels that were regraded and re-excavated to remove all the trees and shrubbery that were in there because all, a lot of these channels still belong to the irrigation district. They were transferred over to the county and to the drainage district for the maintenance and operation on them. Continue, please. Here's the Aguilar Pond, which is another probably uh, several hundred acre pond that is southwest of the first pond that I identified. And you can see there's still water ponding in there. What we're looking at doing on this particular area is probably putting it out for lease, for grazing. There's no use in having it out there and we spending money to mow it. Let's put it out there and let some rancher or whatever bail it or hay do whatever they need to on it with proper insurance and all the other requirements. But these are large tracks that have irrigation access to it. So let's get some money generators coming out of it. This again is looking at from the southwest corner. You see it's pretty leveled in there. I think the commissioner did a good job on getting all of the land leveled out with a slope towards the drain ditches so the water will not stay ponding in the community. We have a levee berm built around the area. A lot of the dirt that was excavated in there was packed around the banks to create a, a bank for it to hold the water. Again, you'll see a ditch on the west side in there where the water goes into and, and channels out and goes into the existing master system of Adal County. These are again part of the outfall ditches coming out of the Dickerson Pond. This is a particular structure where it ties in from Skinner and the San Carlos drain that goes into our main outfall system. You see a structure there on the right side. Uh, what you see is a guardrail there that was installed with a new gate placed on it. That was part of the area that blew out during the Dolly event. And you can see that you're looking straight up on Rogers Road over towards San Carlos drain area. Again, some more pictures of the drain being cleared. No debris, no tires, refrigerators, trash. This is a pump structure that was reconstructed. They used to have an old pumping system that was built probably about 20, 30 years ago. Uh, the commissioner, next slide. And this is the outfall where they have the pump operating, moving the water north. Next slide. You can see on the sign right there, this project was done with the Dow County Precinct Number 1 in partnership with the Urban County. They've installed a 14-inch pump with a standby generator, so it has dual service. In case power goes out, there's a generator there to provide it. They also allowed enough capacity in there to put another pump. That pump hopefully will be relocated once we decommission the Phaseville pump, which is another project that's being done on the north side to alleviate water from one hole to move it into our drainage system. So those pumps that are there, one of them will be relocated to have a dual pumping system in this particular area. And this is the outfall channel going from Valverde West. So what we're trying to show, and we've got, well, the county spent, and with the district buying back the assets, a little over seven, seven and a half million dollars on these projects. So, and I appreciate Ms. Townsend's comment, and I guess we don't do enough of the item going back and showing it does work. So in this particular area, the money that the county has spent has been spent properly. I think the district buying it from y'all, I think the county has done an excellent job of moving ahead and allowing us to catch up with y'all. But again, commissioners, I, you know, hats off to y'all. The system works in, in the San Carlos area. Uh, and again, we will continue showing positive comments and positive projects from part of the bond issue. Again, this is part of the money that we're paying back for the county where we bought the Aguilar and the other pond there from y'all. Along, like, along the lines of, make, of that comment that Ms. Townsend made, I mean, that we don't want to leave the impression that the $260 million that was spent on improving our levy system didn't work. The, the system works. It was a tremendous improvement. Badly needed, money well spent. May not be complete yet, but uh, all we need to do is remember that hurricane that hit Mexico, Hurricane Ike. When in the middle of a drought, we had all our levees filled to capacity with water from Mexico. If we hadn't had those improvements, uh, we would have had the eastern part of our county and uh, would have been flooded. But the system did not fail. The system worked. But we just need to now see what we can do to complete it. Yes, sir. Yeah, my simple comments is uh, I want to thank Commissioner Garza for his, his initial insight on the projects. Uh, we work well together in transitioning and figuring out how we can realize them and put them fully on the ground. They're fully on the ground. Uh, that was a macro approach for San Carlos. Uh, what we've done in the last couple of years is tying in 
uh, the immediate uh, subdivision areas within the San Carlos area and other areas we're able to drain into it. So it's uh, work that our staff are doing in-house. Uh, they've been doing it every day uh, for all these years. I want to commend my staff for doing that because it's been done totally in-house. Uh, we've had some design work done by some, some uh, engineers, but pretty much every work that was done there was done in-house. Uh, they still are on a seven-day work schedule because we're still building. We're, we've been, it's been a beneficial past few years where we haven't been hit hard with the hurricane. So in this time, we're working as hard as we can in the hopes that we can reach out to more subdivisions and communities and help drain better. But uh, the work continues. And you are correct, Commissioner. I'd say probably 97, 98 percent of the work was done with all county forces. Yeah. Next item, sir. Next item, item B, discussion and directions it relates to request by Adult County Regional Mobility Authority on offsite drainage components for State Highway 365 and International Bridge and Trade Corridor Project. I believe there's an exhibit we want to put out. There was a letter forwarded to us, and I believe it was sent also to the commissioners. And I'll give you another copy in case you don't have one. Thank you. Uh, the Idaho County Regional Mobility Authority has had several discussions, both with myself and with Commissioner Tito Palacios and some of the other commissioners, in trying to see how we can work together with the RMA and the drainage district and the county, and in particular to move forward the drainage needs that we have. What you see up front or on the screen up above is the project that the, it, the RMA at this time is developing, which is a 365 in the IBTC. And one of the components, like in any roadway, is, is drainage. You've got to provide drainage in the area. And what better way than to leverage the RMA's dollar to move forward our overall master plan to build ditches where we as a district feel that we need them, not just where the RMA wants to build them. So what they're requesting is to partner up with the drainage district and incur all the costs associated with the development of these projects and working with them that they provide and build the systems where the district needs it and it fits within their construction component. There's a dual purpose on this item also that as these ditches are developed, the contractor can utilize the dirt to build their overpasses in which we have get a better bang for our dollar. Um, we wanted to bring this request to this board. We did attend a meeting several, about a month ago and asked the Idaho County Regional Mobility Authority to request it in writing because one thing we did not want is for them to be saying, well, y'all are sticking your nose into our business. And I wanted to make sure that it's coming at their request not that we're out there offering it. Our services are available if they want us to help. They're sending this letter for this board's consideration to see if y'all are willing to work with them. If the board wishes to and agrees to that, the next step would be for legal counsel to move forward in working an interlocal with them, getting all the specifics behind it, then bringing that interlocal back to this board and to the RMA board for approval. We do have Mr. Louis Jones here, which is a GEC and general manager for, the, for the, the RMA for our area. Uh, he's here representing Dannenbaum and any specific questions you might have of him, he might have had a better additional dialogue with the RMA board. Mr. Thank you, Godfrey. Again, Louis Jones, a program manager for the uh, Hidalgo County RMA. Uh, several months ago, we had started exploring the idea of partnering up with uh, the drainage district and the county on on the our outfalls for 365 and then eventually for IBTC we think that it's a lot uh, bigger bang for our buck for us to basically allow the drainage district to to develop those outfalls and we will pay whatever share that's that we need to pay and, it, and in some instances it may be all of it uh, but it allows us two things it allows us to to better leverage our money, which is all public money with the drainage district to, for the dollar to go further. But it also allows us to allow those projects that, that the drainage district will do on our behalf will be local projects and we will fund those with local funds and then we will not have to do the extensive environmental work 
that if, if we were doing under, under the other project, we would have to spend quite a bit of money on extensive environmental. We're doing it this way, it saves us a lot of time and money. So I think in the, all together, it's gonna help everybody out. I think it's a win-win situation. Uh, and working together, we can address any issue that comes up on that. Uh, Judge, and I think we, I would recommend to we. Yeah. My, <clears throat> anytime you get a partner and they're willing to throw in money into it, why would you say no? It's <laughs> a great deal. How are you going to determine the percentages? Well, the issue is if they need the ditch, it's 100 percent theirs. <laughs> well, we're trying. We have an overall idea where we need to build the ditches. Okay. Yeah. We also know that our ultimate section is going to go into a 150 foot right of way. Okay. The ultimate when we develop it out. We've been doing this with TechStock. The right of way is bought for the ultimate. The RMA goes in and builds a ditch that provides the drainage they need for their roads. Yes. Sir. In the future, we expand that drainage. But at least we have the core, we have the area protected because what's going to happen when these corridors are built, you're going to have development coming all over the place and we're going to be under the gun again to provide drainage right. for that area to grow. That's a great well, it's not an action item, but uh, I think you can get the consensus is that uh, the court believes it's a good idea. And basically the question was very simple, the discussion and direction. The direction from y'all is proceed with negotiations. Right. Get legal counsel and engage on our part to work out the details and bring it back to the board. All right, sweet. That includes uh, acquisition of the uh, right of way. It includes anything related to drainage, Commissioner. I know that they are talking to both Commissioner yourself, Commissioner AC, on their particular area of coming back with an additional request of partnering up with Hidalgo County, not the district, Hidalgo County, for acquisition on some of the lands that are going to be associated in the precincts that they're building at right now. So that is another item that we come in for the commissioner's court in the near future. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Thank you, thank you Mr. Jones. Next item. Next item. Item six. Approval of a utility joint use acknowledgement utility adjustment between Nidal County Drainage Number One and United Irrigation District UID as it relates to Textile Highway Improvements FM 681 and acceptance of special warranty deed. Basically, again, it's a partnership between the United Irrigation District Textile Precinct Number Three in which they're making improvements to 681, that they're going in there and they've acquired an easement or obtained a joint use agreement with the United Irrigation District to put a storm sewer line in there to provide drainage for the area. Uh, we've had legal review this easement. Everything's in order. We present to this board for your consideration. Uh, the United Irrigation District has already concurred, so we're here as a, as a formality for the board for consideration. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item 7, approval of application for payment number 4 for Asago LLC, DBA Asago Construction. As it relates to the Edinburgh Wastewater Treatment Plant effluent line road crossing in the amount of $50,833.73, PO number 622338. Again, request for payment on a project that's an interlocal between the City of Edinburgh, Idaho County Precinct number 4, and Idaho County Drainage District to make required improvements. In this case, the City of Edinburgh is doing a massive plant expansion. They needed an outfall system. We have a system that we're developing out there. They've partnered with us to pay for it. Precinct number four is providing installation services for some of these outfalls. This particular segment, we couldn't get it done in-house, so we put it out for bid, and Asal Construction is a contractor. We're finalizing the project at this time. But again, as Commissioner <coughs> Joe Palazzo's partnerships in getting everybody's pot of money into it to get programs going. Move for approval. Check. Okay. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item request approval of purchase of the master drain system MDS phase two, which is comp comprised of the design expansion of the rainbow drain outfall system as per assignment of contract and engineering product from Hidalgo County to Hidalgo County drain system one. The amount is $5,518,883. Basically, this is the amount that we're paying Hidalgo County for the expenditures they've done on this project. This money is being delivered to the county to go into the county's coffers to be utilized as the county sees fit, but it is part of the acquisition assets that we're doing with Hidalgo County. We've approval. gone through the auditor and cleared all these items, so we're ready to cut you all the check. Check. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. There's a question. Yes, sir. 
Uh, similar, you've done a similar action on this on the Aguilar Pond and the Dickerson Pond. Yes, so those monies were dispersed to y'all about a month and a half ago, Commissioner. I don't know where they stand at, but they've been in the county's coffer already. Yeah, and it's just going to be more of a question for the court. At least we need clarification from budget. Uh, the way we recognize them, I think the auditor sets an account, and then we, he certifies when we're starting to use it. And I just want to make sure that whether or not that process is the most efficient process. I know budget is there, and we can discuss this when it gets to the county coffers. So I just just to work. I, I, we're, we've experienced some some delays uh, because we're having to certify them first and then attach them to projects. So I'm wondering if we that's cut a, you a check. It's in your account, sir. Okay. <laughs> All righty. Thank you. Don't forget precinct too. <laughs> yes, sir. We're waiting for the precinct to deliver the documentation. We had a meeting yesterday. As soon as we have those documents, Commissioner, I think there's about four million dollars worth of assets from your precinct that we're still waiting the documentation on. I'm not going to charge you interest. <laughs> no, are you on the delay, sir? <laughs> Uh, I don't know if y'all took a vote on that yet or not. Nothing uh, for... No. All yeah. right. Need a motion to adjourn? No, sir. We have an item under closed yeah, session closed for the session. board's consideration. Oh, well, well, need a motion to proceed to executive session pursuant to 551071 and 072 of the Texas Government Code. So moved. Rule. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. We'll be in executive session for a while. I'm sorry, Judge. Yes, sir. Uh, basically, under executive session, no action was taken. I would just like to, to proceed as directed by the board. We have no other items for the board's consideration. Move to adjourn. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Judge, I'm going to have to excuse myself. Um, I'm not going to be here for the, for the next meeting. Uh, That'll no. be fine, Commissioner. All right, at this time, we're going to convene our Hidalgo County Commissioner's Court meeting for today, October 2nd, 2013. 2013, present are Commissioner Cuellar, Precinct 1, Palacios, Precinct 4, and myself. Present our Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for this day. Please forgive us, Father, for always thinking that we've got the answer to everything. And actually, if you're not in it, nothing will ever come out right. We ask you to bless our nation. Please bless the world. Help the world to have some peace and stop the killing and all the bad stuff that goes on, please, dear Lord. And please bless our families and our state, our county, and these commissioners that work for us. We ask all of this in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. All right, uh, our consent, any concerns in our consent agenda, sir? Uh, yes, Judge. I would like to ask that consent agenda item 2, double D, consent agenda item 10, A2, and consent agenda item 10, C, be pulled for discussion. Move for approval of consent agenda, excluding 2, double D, 10, 2, and 10, C. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Judge Commissioners, on item 2 double D, uh, the transfer should be from general fund, not the special purpose fund. If we could have it approved uh, from general fund, fund uh, 1100. Requesting approval. So moved. Second. 
Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Does Does that address the all of them? Well, under uh, consent agenda item 10A2, Judge, uh, that has to do with the uh, 10th Street extension. Uh, I have not been able to certify the revenues for this project as we have a, a question regarding some receivables due from the city of Edinburgh. Uh, we met with the city manager earlier, but he's saying he's going to generate a letter, but I don't have that yet. So Steve, what I would like to recommend... Actually, it's right here. There's a copy of the letter. Okay. So what I would like to recommend is uh, to bring this back. I won't be able to certify it this time. I need to review the letter and make Judge, sure Judge, I understand the, the auditor's position. We respectfully have spoken the last few days. Uh, in this case, we have a contract, uh, an interlocal agreement. There's a superseding interlocal agreement that the city of Edinburgh uh, is not responsible for some right-of-way costs uh, that we had prior to the project. 10th Street is a project that the county has initially had partnered with the city of Edinburgh to do, uh, where the city and the county would be responsible for full construction. Since then, we've uh, had LNG work with us. We've secured construction dollars of uh, close to 13, 14 million dollars. Uh, it is now not the responsibility of the county nor the city to come up with the millions of dollars to be able to do this project. We entered a new interlocal agreement because there was a change of scope and there was a change of approach altogether. In that case, uh, there was a receivable in, a pr in the prior interlocal agreement that the city was responsible for. We do, in fact, have a superseding interlocal agreement. Now, the city of Edinburgh is willing to pay what they're really not responsible to pay, it's a previous, and I don't know what the tune of it is, anywhere between thirty to $40,000. Judge, I, I, I plead that we continue to move forward on this project. Uh, there's been delays uh, because of the confusion between the superseding and inter interlocal agreements. Uh, City of Edinburgh has been a bona fide partner with the county, uh, whether we're addressing the courthouse needs um, and many other projects that are working with the, uh, with, the, with the county on it. I'd like to defer to legal if there is an issue. Uh, related to this, uh, we do in fact have a letter already from the City of Edinburgh. They're honoring the price. I'd like to move forward if, if possible, or the court consider to move forward. Um, the other question is about certifying funds on 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 the um, the monies used for this 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 project. Um, I, I I don't have a problem uh, dotting I's crossing T's, but I wh what I want to do is uh, we've been known for delaying many processes. Uh, we've had public notice, p public meetings on this project. We want to make sure that our projects are moving forward. The sooner we, we we're able to do a lot of the scope of work, we're able to put this infrastructure on the ground. So I leave this matter before you, and whatever the will of the court is or or legal, I'd like to be able to address it. I have not seen the <coughs> excuse me. I have not seen the letter. The letter is. We have a copy of the letter. Well, the letter is right here, but. Uh, just FYI, just, there's no funding in place for this project at there, this point. If I may, there is funding in place. Can you? Can yes. you? Judge Commissioners, uh, the funding was receded from the buybacks, drainage buybacks that we uh, asked that we sold to the drainage district. Those are sitting in our coffers right now. All we would need is for the county auditor to certify those as revenue. Uh, the money has been receded. It is in our coffers. We did have a sales contract uh, between the county and the district for the sale of these assets. So just, um, if we could, we approve uh, the appropriation subject to the auditor certification. I, I don't believe that, I believe that's the only delay that we would have. It, I, he I, has I, all the documents available for him for review. All right. Is there any? Yeah. Sure. <clears throat> I think we had met on this issue several times, Judge. And so the delays, I think they're there, but we have been trying to get this thing moved forward. It's not, it's not, we have a yes, so they're not obligated to pay, but they're going to honor it by paying it. What, I'm, what I would recommend is that the <clears throat> court approve this subject to the auditor's certification of the revenues. And I'm good with that. All right, do you want to make that motion? So moved. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Yeah. All right. Is that it? I believe there was another concern. Item C. On item C, uh, Judge Commissioners, we will be taking no action on that item. Uh, there will be, uh, we have an amendment to the interlocal. However, there still need to be some corrections made to remove the reference to the Tom Gill uh, road as the alignment has changed on that project. 
So we will be bringing that item back next week along with the appropriation and the amended and local. So we'll request no action for that item. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next item is uh, open forum. First presenter is Virginia Townsend. Yes, I, I said it was progress that I was going to talk about. I appreciate our PR department, Karina, uh, for putting out a thing saying that the work on the annex building is starting today wow. and will be finished in a year to 18 months. I think that's wonderful. I want a starting date. I'd like to have an ending date. But Maso Manus is okay. I just want everybody to know something's going on over there and keep those people with their feet to the fire, please. I don't want any delays and a bunch of silliness going on. Thanks. Thank you, ma'am. Next presenter is Opal Billman. I want to be cutting uh, presentations to four minutes to accommodate all the people that signed up. Oh, you have a lot of people? Yes. I'd like to have permission to finish my remarks. Ma'am? I would like to have permission to finish my remarks. I have a certain amount of remarks to make. I think go I might be started, able to Ms. read them in four minutes. Go, go ahead and get started. Thank you. I was sued for divorce in Hidalgo County. There is nothing in divorce law that gives the judge the authority to place one spouse under police-enforced false imprisonment for one hour must last for 17 years. False imprisonment is a crime. The community property of Joe and me is 72 acres of debt-free land with capital improvements. The judge's only job was to give a fair division of our 72 acres with capital improvements to us the two owners and close the case with a final divorce. It would have been so simple. Acquire a survey of the land and draw one line across the survey, dividing the land into two parcels and award both Joe and me a parcel of our debt-free community property. In a divorce action, the judge has no legal authority to keep the entire community property intact and appoint a court manager for the community property. The judge was supposed to divide our community property. In this case, with two judges, two community properties, two divorce settlements, the court can just play any, meeny, miny, mo forever and do nothing. October 26, 2012, I filed a petition with the 275th District Court to allow a land, service, uh, land survey I had commissioned to be completed. If the surveys of our property being used were accurate, no one would care how many surveys I buy. All of the surveys would match. They would all be the same. June 28, 2013, I filed another petition with the 275th District Court requesting a hearing to establish if the court's actions comply with the Constitution and the rule of law. The court has not responded to either one of these petitions. My divorce settlement is a $266,500 promissory note. A promissory note is debt. The debt is Joe's. The court ordered me to underwrite Joe a debt in the amount of $266,500 for the divorce settlement of $650,000. Joe was to pay this loan with rent from our community property. Joe gave me no money. For a divorce settlement, I was awarded a $266,500 debt, along with defamation of my character by false accusations of mental illness for the purpose of giving my community property to the court appointee and unending false, unending police enforced false imprisonment. The court ordered Joe 
to give the appointee of the court $266,500. The court appointee claims to have bought our land from left. Joe. In the court appointee and the 200, it is the two, excuse me, is the court appointee and the $266,500 being used to impose a reverse mortgage on our debt-free community property. There can be no mortgage on our property. Nobody sold anything. The $266,500 has nothing to do with our community property. Its foundation is the court's $650,000 divorce settlement. The debt-free community property of Joe and me remains owned by Joe and me. Joe sold nothing. I sold nothing. The judge divided nothing. Thank you very much for your time. Next presenter is Maria Cant Cantor. Thank you. Good morning, and thank you for allowing me to say something. I'm here to thank you for last week this commissioner meeting in which Mr. Joe Flores, commissioner and commissioner precinct three, uh, um, didn't allow the increase for the justice of the pieces, which was a saving for the taxpayer. Thank you very much for the other commissioners who follow through and you uh, judge. And thank you very much also for the owls who are always here, the lady owls, and nobody says anything to them. They are really doing a good job. Well. That was pretty good that you did that, but this has to be across the board. The savings has to be a, have to be across the board. For instance, I was looking in the budget that you want to charge for parking, and you want to charge for this, you want to increase the fees. I, I'm here to remind you that this is a, a poor county. Fernie, please. She's going to give you the data that I took from Trulia.com, in which you can see the the net income of the individual and the families in, of just three cities. Eddie Moore has uh, an income for the individual of 29000 a year. This is the average. So there is only so much you can ask in taxes. So please take in consideration and think every time you're going to approve something, think about the taxpayers. We will be here. We will be your Jiminy Crickets in the year so you can remember us, the taxpayers. Thank you. Sergio, Worry. anybody here from budget? Sergio. All right, Sergio, that parking issue, I thought it was taken out. All right. That, I'm not sure what you must, you must have looked at an earlier draft or something, because there is no requirement for paying parking. Are you going to buy a machine to cheat tires? All right. Thank you, ma'am. Next, next, next presenter is Humberto Garza. Uh, good morning, Judge. Good morning, Commissioners. Humberto Garza with the Office of Congressman Filimon Vela. That's in Texas Congressional District 34. It's a quick announcement regarding the federal shutdown. Just wanted to inform the public and want to inform people of South Texas and more so our constituency that we are open. We will be open, and uh, you can reach us at our regular daily hours, 8 to 5, 544 8352, or at vela.house.gov. Alexis Gallegos with the Office of Congressman Henry Cuer. For the record, I uh, just wanted to mention the same thing that, uh, that Humberto mentioned. Our office will remain open. We are located on 117 East Tom Landry. Our phone number is 956 424 3942. And we are uh, open to the public in case they have any questions and concerns with the, the government shutdown. I did bring some material so that way you can share with your, your respective areas. And it's in regards to Congressman Guayar released a statement on continuing resolution and government shutdown along with everything you need to know about how government shutdown works. So I'll leave that here with, uh, with your staff so they can uh, pass that over. Thank right. you. Thank you. Next presenter is Ivan Ramon.
Good morning, Judge. Good morning, Commissioners. I am here to uh, let you know that yesterday I received word from the Department of Public Safety and the Secretary of State's office where we will be opening for six days. That's October 16th, 17th, 18th, and then October 21st, 22nd, and 23rd. And we will be working with DPS in sending workers out from their office and our office to set up sites at various locations throughout Hidalgo County to help the community by answering questions regarding the EIC. Now the EIC is the Elections Identification Certificate that is being given to the public for free at no cost to the public if in fact they do not own a photo ID for voting. So not only will they have their offices open and they will have three locations open in Edinburgh, Mission and Westlaco every Saturday from 10 to 2 from now until November 2nd. Also, and strictly to either answer questions or distribute the EIC to the community that perhaps is not able to go to DPS during the hours uh, between Monday and Friday. So once again, those three offices are open from 10 to 2 from now until November 2nd, strictly to issue out the EIC. And then I will come back once the locations have been uh, uh, identified as to where we are going to be in a mobile unit type setting. Of course, it's not a vehicle, it's just a, a table with chairs, but representatives from DPS and my office will also be there to register, to answer questions, to verify voter, uh, any questions that the voter may have on their registration. Is there anything more we can do? I mean, I do believe in the process of perfecting the voting process. Yes, sir. But the question I have is a fear that there's always a reluctance in our community for, you know, for just anybody to take care of things like this. I mean, utilization of uh, re uh, community resource centers, I mean, anything we can do as a precinct, I mean, disenfranchising voters is probably one of the things we need to look away from. Uh, if this improves it, we need to figure out how to perfect it. Yes, sir. Uh, it's, it's, it's not just going to happen by public notices. We're really going to have to go to the doorsteps of people to make this work. So, I, And I think that's a very good idea, Commissioner. If, if your offices would like, we can meet you know, with our office and we can inform your staff so that anyone that asks a question is not turned away, but in fact their questions are answered right there on the spot. Right. Sometimes people don't call back when they're asked to call back. Sometimes people don't come back and bring an identification. In fact, after the four elections, um, we only had two people out of about 20 come back to our office to present ID during that curing period of six days. So it is very difficult, and, and I agree. I welcome uh, you to call my office and let's set something up. We can have a, a, a small training, just like DPS is doing right now with their staff. Uh, I will be working with Karina and her office staff to make sure that and again, send out public notice, but not everyone receives that notice. Sometimes people will call your offices directly. So let's follow up on that. I think that is a great idea. Okay, any other questions? Nobody's gonna be denied the right to vote, right? They, they no, can sir. vote uh, provisionally. Provisional. They may vote provisionally, and the only thing is that then they have to come to my office, uh, right here at the elections main office, to present the photo ID. And it's called a curing period. So they Absolutely. will be able to vote provisionally. Okay, thank you. Norma Longoria. Good morning, awesome. Judge Commissioners. I'm here just to clarify uh, the media craze that's going out, you know, that's coming out and saying that WIC is closed. Um, we heard that in the news last night. And yes, there is a government shutdown, but uh, it hasn't affected WIC yet. Uh, the state has funding for 30 days of services, so we're their doors are open. We're providing services to all our constituents. So in case you get calls at your offices, we are open for business as usual. Business as usual. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Norma. Mm -hmm. Item six A. Good morning, Judge Commissioners. Karina Cardoza with the Public Affairs Office. Item 6A is a presentation by the McAllen Chamber of Commerce for discussion and action if necessary, seeking approval and support from Commissioner's Court members for the opportunity to bid on the 2015 County Judges and Commissioners Annual Conference to be held in McAllen. And I'd like to introduce Mr. Robert Lopez. He's the Director of Convention Sales at the McAllen Chamber of Commerce to uh, present this item. Morning, sir. Good morning, Judge. Good morning, Commissioners. 
Uh, as Karina mentioned, uh, McAllen Convention and Visitors Bureau and the McAllen Chamber of Commerce have been offered the opportunity to bid on the 2015 County Judges and Commissioners Association of Texas Annual Conference. Uh, we would be bidding against San Marcos and Corpus Christi for the event. And uh, the only thing that I need from you is uh, a letter of your support and to show your support. Absolutely. Okay. No, uh, no financial support? Oh, actually, yes. The economic impact for local businesses. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, the event is estimated to generate 810 hotel room nights for the city. And the estimated economic impact for local businesses is $210,000. But are you going to need any, any money from the county? Uh, from the county, we would need you to sponsor an evening function known as a host court event. And that could be done through sponsorships, donations, or... Yeah, we did that when we had the uh, South Texas Conference yes. of County Judges. Mm -hmm. And the difference between this one is, uh, obviously, it's a different event uh, with the South Texas County Judges Association that took place at the McAllen Convention Center. Uh, sometimes the food and beverage costs at the convention center can get a little, get a little high. Uh, this event does not say it has to be at the convention center. Uh, it can be at an off-site uh, location and uh, the uh, catering and the food and beverage can be uh, bought through any vendor you'd like. Okay. Any questions? If not, I would entertain a motion. So move. We'll second. To approve, those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Judge, but does that include the uh, contribution? Because I don't believe we can... Uh... No, it's, he's, no, we're going to be out there seeking... Uh, okay. Uh, no county funds. Donations. Yes. No yeah. county yeah. funds. Yeah. Donations and sponsorship. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Item B. Uh, morning, judges. Bobby Vidal with the County Judge's Office. Uh, discussion, consideration, action to appoint individual or individuals uh, to begin dialogue and or negotiations with various entities in regards to a Donna Bridge investment. Um, I guess as you've seen in the, in the news, uh, Cameron County has been interested in the Donna Bridge as well as various entities. Uh, so. Bobby, uh, you're too tall. Pick that thing oh. up a little bit. There we go. Um, as you've seen, uh, Cameron County and, and some other entities have uh, sought well, interest. Well, I read that Cameron County, McAllen, Far, West, 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 and, and they have an interest in the Donna Bridge. Uh, yes, and, and we've gotten an unsolicited uh, from Donna's also sent us some paperwork on it as well. So in talking with Vale and Sergio, we wanted just to make sure that uh, we got some action or direction from you all to go ahead and, and start talking to different entities about this. Move for and, approval. And we're looking at, uh, we're already, ta we're going to start taking this over to Chris Vela with the First Southwest to analyze the numbers and, and that sort of thing. Obviously the interest is because there's revenues there. Yeah. An investment will seek some revenues. Uh, I think it's important to be at the table, at mm -hmm. least to discuss all options and see if it be uh, in the best interest of the Hidalgo County to be looking at it. I know in Cameron County, they, the bulk of their income is through bridge, bridge uh, yeah. tolls. Um, but I, if we can get uh, Commissioner, Commissioner Coyette, if you'd like to sit in on it, I, I, I mean, I'd yeah, somebody well, I'm be interested in starting looking in it. And, yeah. okay. I've already met with uh, the mayor and uh, the consultants and uh, one or two of the commissioners. Okay. Uh, well, I, I would say if, if, if y'all would do so, maybe Valle, myself, and uh, Sergio be... Uh, uh, All right. We'll go forward and, and look further into and do our due diligence for it. Fine. Absolutely. Move we'll approval. Okay. Second. So, who's going to be appointed on this? Sergio Valde. Sergio um, Valde. And myself. All right. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Item C. Good morning, Judge. Good morning, Commissioners. Rick Oliver with the County Judge's Office. Uh, item 6C is approval of list of nominations for the Hidalgo County Appraisal uh, District Board. The chief appraiser sent over a letter indicating that uh, there will be, he will be conducting the 2014-2015 uh, elections for the Board of Directors. Uh, the list doesn't have to be in until December 31st, so uh, I will, in your packet, you, ha you have that letter, and uh, it, it gives us information about the process. If, if there's only any questions, I'm going to move to uh, item 6D, approval of the contract for DHR, City of Edinburgh, for use of the conference center
for the uh, Affordable Care Act event scheduled for November hold 8th. Hold on, hold on, Rick. The, you, you don't need action on C? No, no action is required this time, Judge. Until December, I believe? Until December 31st. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, go ahead, sir. Okay. Uh, Item 60 is the approval of the contract with DHR, City of Edinburgh, for use of the conference center for the Affordable Care Act event scheduled for November 8, 2013, and authorization for the county judge to sign any associated documents. This is a no-fee uh, uh, contract, and we're asking for approval. Move for approval. Move. Second. Those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Item 7, Mr. Guerra. Thank you, Judge Commissioners. There's no action under item 7A1 and 2 at this time. I do have a presentation by Mr. Alex Palacios under uh, 7B1, uh, but just very quickly, I want to skip to 7B2, update on portable building project and ongoing uh, owned building construction renovation projects. Judge Commissioners, uh, the downspout issue with respect to the portables has been addressed, uh, as well as the construction uh, of the benches for seating at the portable buildings. Uh, I know that they have uh, started the construction uh, Mr. Flores sent over uh, the first pictures of the benches that have been completed. Uh, they will, uh, uh, all benches will be completed shortly and be installed at the portable building for seating. Uh, so that should address uh, the last two items uh, that came up as a result of, uh, again, uh, it's a, a learning curve uh, with respect to the portables out there, but that should take care of the last two issues uh, that uh, were brought up as issues of concern. Uh, and so if I may judge, uh, uh, item three, emergency situations, there are none since last court session. And so I will refer back to item 7B1, uh, renovations to former administration buildings, first and second floors. Uh, I'm going to ask Mr. Alex Palacios, uh, who is our construction manager, uh, to give the court uh, an update. Stan. Good morning, judge. Good morning, sir. Commissioners. Um, if I may, we've got a little presentation to, on the first and second floor. We ended at a brief uh, pamphlet in regards to the first and second floor project, and we are proposing it uh, on the screen so that the audience can view. First of all, uh, again, thank you very much for this morning. I'll make it very brief because you have a long agenda. Uh, this particular project is the Hidalgo County Court Administration's renovations first and second floor. The, um, the individuals that are on this project, construction management is Prodigy Construction Manager for McAllen, Mr. D. Wilson Construction, and Alcocer, and Associ Alcocer Garcia Associates. Next slide. The next slide you'll see is that uh, we prepared an, air uh, an aerial slide that denotes the area where the staging will take place uh, uh, of work for the general contractor. This particular plan or staging area that we call it was deduced from uh, 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 having a lot of discussions with many departments, uh, inclusive the uh, Mr. Valdeguera's office, the district attorneys, and so on and so forth. I have a slide at the end of the, the presentation that will denote that. Right next to the where the uh, colorful picture is where the staging area is, uh, the areas in green were areas designated uh, by the county uh, for county parking employee for the existing third and fourth floor. So the point of uh, the aerial shot and the presentation, if, if uh, it's been uh, blessed by the uh, Mr. Guerra's office, we will issue these to the various departments to the third and fourth floor so that they can view and they will have exactly where the county employees need to park and where they need to be. Important because we've been working with the city of Edinburgh as well and trying to minimize any, any issues that may arise for the period of 10 to 12 months. Um, the next slide. Initially, the estimated budget for this particular project was 3.3 million, or 3,314. The, uh, this first floor square footage is approximately 28,000 square feet. The second floor is 23,000 square feet of, of uh, general contractor working space. Uh, to date, the project, and there I have a little typo, uh, where it's uh, 435, it should be 320 days. If you could make that correction, please. 320 days. And that number was, uh, is taken exactly from D. Wilson's construction contract. We, um, this project is starting with a 61220 additional cost for two, two reasons. Uh, two, the bullets there was one subcontractor who had initially bid, bid with Mr. Wilson 
Uh, he had to remobilize. He was a vendor that was doing work within the area at the time that the project was bid out. So remobilization, for those who understand, is that there, that included a little uh, a higher price for the project. The next one, a subcontractor withdrew from the bid, so Mr. Wilson had to acquire the services of another bidder. So basically $61,000, which was previously approved, we believe that it's, it's within that project budget. So the new budget is $3,375,220. Next slide. It will be completed on 320 days, right? 320. 320 days. Yeah. Next, you will see a tentative construction schedule that uh, we issued, the county issued the notice to proceed that uh, the contractor is, is pending to sign. Again, on October, the, the time starts today. As of this morning, Mr. Wilson uh, um, is acquiring the building permit with the city of Vandenberg. Uh, I'm waiting for his call. I'll have that information uh, this afternoon to make sure that we do have the permit in our hands, a physical permit. The construction of 320 days will take us all the way up to September, October. Could we have done the November, December, January timeline? Uh, but we're proposing and we feel confident that we can have the contractor start substantial completion October 2014 and move into final closing documents in November of 2014. Mr. Palacios, the, sir. the exact starting date, when is? Today. This today? month, sir. Okay. Well, today? Well, as soon as he acquires the paperwork, if the city of Edinburgh is, is kosher with what he has to present and we get the permit, the time, the, 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 time, uh, the clock starts. So when will we know when the uh, starting count is 320 days? I will let, the, 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 I will let the, de the appropriate departments know when the clock starts. And, yes, sir. and let, me, let me just add one comment to that. We made the statement and there was a, a disclosure that construction, uh, the project started today and that is, uh, that is a fair statement to make because uh, there's been preparation already started uh, late yesterday today. So uh, with respect to the construction contract, with respect to the 320 days, obviously Mr. Yes. Uh, Palacios will let me know, but I did want to let everyone know that we have started this project because there is, uh, there is uh, facilitation uh, to get uh, ready for the staging. Uh, trash compactors or the uh, trash bins were moved. We've uh, uh, selected a site. Uh, he'll, Mr. Right there, right there. Palacios will address that in a second with respect to, to who we talked to at the city. and. And uh, uh, I'll stop at that and let Mr. Yes. Palacios but, continue. But the reason I asked the question, because some, some contracts call for a penalty if you don't complete it on time. Uh, I don't know if this contract has that, so that's why. Uh, we do have, uh, the contract does stipulate uh, uh, liquidated damages, sir. Right. Yes. So, so that's why we start counting from that point right. forward and then we I, do a, I will make sure that your office is well aware of when the, of the, when the clock day. starts. Right. Yes. Thank right. Thank you. We have, uh, as Mr. Guerra mentioned, uh, we're going back to the aerial shot. Basically, we have a six-foot chain link fence. The project has been already initiated, and uh, it, it's, it's, it's already, it's moving forward. Let's go back to the project tub. As Mr. Guerra mentioned, as Mr. Guerra mentioned, the slide, uh, um, the owner has already taken several initiatives uh, to prepare some of the buildings uh, as far as the door the exterior door, the push bar, all these requirements, the trash bin containers. Extensive work has already done, been done by the owner. Uh, we had, on the project management side, we have been meeting with the city of uh, Edinburgh, we've been meeting with the county, and we have been trying to resolve and uh, finite, uh, finalize many gray, potential gray areas within the project. We have been meeting with several departments, as you have a project directory on the last page there, We've been meeting uh, extensively with the executive office, the public affairs, purchasing, but most importantly, the Department of, of uh, Facilities Management um, that have been, have been very instrumental in, uh, on the construction side to find out uh, so that we can solve any potential problems that, that may be lurking. <coughs> one, one note that I'd like to stress is that um, this particular project has absolutely no blueprints, no blue lines, nothing that we can reference to. We're, we're going into a building with several potential unknowns. However, with working with the county and doing some um, as-built works, we've been able to identify some of those potential problems that we may encounter. The, um, um, the variances, we're looking into that, and as I mentioned before, uh, the uh, general contractor should have a construction permit this morning. Any Mr. questions? Also, on this slide right here, it says uh, safety department, or I don't know what, how to pronounce that. But it has my name on it. You got a new title? I'm not with. <laughs> I'm, not I'm with sorry, sir. Department. There was a continuance. <laughs> you got a new title? <laughs> I don't know. I was, Unless uh, someone 
uh, has not notified me of the change, but yeah. I'm with the county auditor's office. We will, we will correct that, Mr. Okay. Any questions, gentlemen? No. If not, that concludes our, our current Thank status you. report on the but problem. The, what I would like to, to do is suggest a, a pre-construction meeting to make sure that everyone is understanding what the requirements are. I want to be able to pay invoices as soon as possible. Mr. And so that's what I would like to have suggest Mr. if it's possible to do Mr. Frasso, we had a meeting, uh, I believe it was yesterday or day before. Day before, sir. Day before and uh, before the end of that meeting, uh, that that uh, is our next step. Uh, we were going to set up a meeting with your office uh, with respect to the processing of payments, billings, and whatnot. But I don't think the meeting, uh, well, in the meeting, we got to have uh, the construction uh, company and everyone involved to right. make sure that in the oh, I understand. To make sure that there's an understanding as to who's going to be responsible for reviewing and approving invoices. Right. I understand. And whether or not there's going to be any court uh, approval necessary. Right. So that is really important for us to be able to process payments. Right. Now, that was discussed, and that is our next step. Okay. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Sir. Palacios. All right. Next item. Judge Commissioners, uh, those, those are the, the next item that I have is item C, uh, presentation uh, and discussion by Mr. Hollis Rutledge Associates and uh, recapturing of the funds, federal and state agency, other sources. Uh, I know that that was discussed earlier, so Judge, uh, I don't know if we need to uh, reiterate what was, what was already discussed. Rutledge. Go ahead, sir. Judge, members of the commission, as we indicated in our previous meeting with the drainage district, we will uh, take on the recommendation of the commission to set in motion specific meetings uh, with our congressional delegation involved, as they have been from the beginning, to set uh, uh, a couple of dates. Uh, to meet with the parties uh, dealing with the IBWC project, uh, including any and all agencies that we mentioned in our letter uh, that was issued by the judge to um, IBWC. That letter, of course, is, uh, has been disseminated to the congressional delegation staff. They're aware of the agencies that uh, we've requested to be involved. Uh, the only uh, minor change would be that we would need to go ahead and include some of the municipal governments that might be affected, uh, Judge, that we probably need to contact and make sure that they're part of, part of the process. Yeah, no, that's, that's going to be very critical, very important that we have that meeting. On the issue that we hired your firm on, um, am I correct in believing that uh, really you don't see any any headway on either administratively or legislatively uh, or judge uh, because we we did we found this issue on the MOA uh, which we're in the middle of uh, and our contention is that we still have an opportunity uh, to uh, mitigate uh, our issues with IBWC simply because uh, we feel strongly that the projects that were part of the scope of work in the MOA have not been completed. We've already noted that. They've noted it because they've already admitted it. Um, well, what we, can you do to further our being able to get some of that money back? We, f we feel that legislatively we could continue that process. They can't uh, even meet. P p pending, pending, of course, our resolution to this other issue. Uh, and I guess we can all agree in this room that when we encountered this issue, uh, even though the MOA and the amendment argument is still in play, that um, we found a bigger issue which we need to resolve. And then uh, during that, those discussions, hopefully, Judge, uh, not only do we want to probably find out from them what their contingency plans are, in case we do have a hurricane, which, you know, we've got another two and a half years to worry about, and what those plans are, uh, and to be able to address those issues, that we can also address the, uh, the amendment uh, process that we've been requesting of them from the very beginning. All right. 
Any Thank other you. questions? Okay. Any questions? No. Nope. No. Nope. Thank, Thank you, sir. You. Item eight, our DA's office. Morning, Judge Commissioner. Morning, sir. sir. We're requesting approval of the Title IV-E Legal Services Contract Number uh, 2394-1008 and the Child Welfare Services Contract 2394-1009 budgets for October 1st, 2013 through September 30th, 2014. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item two is approval for county judge to sign the uh, follow following documents. It's the budget, the signature authority, authority designation, the additional author authorized signature designation to authorize uh, Mr. Oflacio, and the purchase client services contract amendment, Title IV-E legal services, and the child welfare, and the uh, FFATA. Move for approval of 8A, 2A through F. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Judge, if, if we may, I see Mr. Chuy Ramirez in the audience. I know his, uh, our bond, bond counsel, his time is pretty valuable. I was wondering what, if What we item can... is he, is Chuy here on? <clears throat> Chuy, what item is it, sir? Item what? 20. Uh, the item reads, uh, acceptance and approval of the final negotiated AIA forms of agreement with Mata Garcia Architects, LLP, in connection uh, to the design construction of the Lynn San Manuel uh, Emergency Services Building for Precinct 4. Judge, just to kind of um, give you an update, uh, this, this project obviously started with the, with the original fire, the original fire department that Lin Samoa had in that we've uh, worked constructively with the community to provide funds for a future building. Uh, we had a partnership with the e uh, Emergency Service District Board number three uh, where they did a financial pledge to the building. Uh, we also had the Lynn Improvement Corporation who is uh, uh, pledged 100000 as well. Uh, we've coupled those dollars with some county dollars to be able to do a, a, a facility. We also had a donation, excuse me, from the Flotus family for the land as well. Uh, the auditor raised a question whether or not we could use um, COs for the construction of uh, a public facility. And I wanted to make sure that we, we, uh, we express the, the intended use for the building. Uh, we want to make sure that we get comments so that the auditor can be um, comfortable. Uh, with uh, with us moving forward. Good morning, Judge. Uh, Good morning, sir. Members of the court. The the I guess there's really two questions. The first question is, can you use proceeds of the certificates for the for for this project, for construction of the project? And the answer is yes. The second question is, are you going to have any kinds of uses or projected uses that might raise a private use? And the answer is yes. There is a potential for the building to be used. Uh, not directly, but indirectly by, by a lessee or a contractor with the uh, emergency medical services, I believe. There, there was a question regarding that. Uh, they have an independent contract with the emergency service district. Our, okay. our agreement is merely with the emergency service district. It has nothing to do with them. Uh, we have no immediate intended use for them to be part of the initial building that we're building. Mm -hmm. uh, if it ever posed, it'd be a plea from the ESD to the commissioner's court. Obviously, we would not move without direction from bond counsel or, or legal if that could be done. It's nothing that we envision in the immediate construction of this facility. Um, so I thought it was a non-issue. Um, well, the, the, issue, the issue is this, is that if you have a, an independent contractor or a private business using the building, then the contract must satisfy the requirements of the Treasury regulations. Right. Uh, either that or we would break up the uh, allocation of, of funds, the, the county's tax exempt bond proceeds to a portion of the building and the other uh, two contributions to other portions of the building. So it seems to me that there's two solutions to the problem. It's not a serious problem. We can deal with it um, in, one, in one of those two ways. Uh, the first one, again, repeating for the record, is that the lease agreement or the, or the contract between the, with the private uh, firm would have to comply with, with the uh, Treasury regs. I don't see any problem drafting that type of agreement. 
or we would allocate the different sources of funds to different users of the building and avoid the issue that way. But it is an avoidable issue. Perfect. Judge, I have a concern regarding this item. It has to do with the certification of revenues. I have not been able to certify revenues until we get a letter from Bank Council regarding this. We have met with the precinct several times on this issue, and one of the suggestions that I made is to consult with Bank Council to make sure that everything, because I think he signs a certification that the county is going to comply with the CO's covenants and, and all of that. I don't sign a certification. The county signs the certification. Right. I just make sure that it is. But in terms of the fund, the availability of those funds, uh, those funds under the, under the order should be deposited to the construction fund. So I understand that today what you're doing is you're approving a contract with the architect. So there are funds available uh, from the proceeds of those certificates. They should be in the construction fund for these projects. So the money is there for the purpose. But I agree with you. I think that you want to play it safe and you want to get a letter from me saying that the future use of the building should uh, be under the terms that I suggest to you. Right. And Judge, it's important to clarify. We have no objection to the position of the auditor. We've spoke uh, at great extent, talked about the issues, and we're willing to resolve it all. We don't want to hinder the project here. Here, we're obviously we don't have a facility out there. We'd like to approve it uh, uh, with, uh, I guess, uh, subject to the auditor clearing that clearing the, yeah. the letter. And again, in order for me to certify the revenues, I would have to get a letter from from Jim. Right, but this is something I'll get a letter to you today. And also, the other issue, Judge, is that. Emergency Services District Number Three has contributed some monies already to the county. However, we don't have any local with that entity yet, and that needs to be in place also. As part of all of these things, and we have uh, more than one entity contributing towards the cost of this building, and we need to have all those documents in place. Well, first of all, if if the funds have been contributed, it's like any other donation. If you if the funds, if you have the funds in hand, it's a donation. Like any individual could give a donation to the county. Well, the county has accepted the donation. Or? Well, I do would you have the it. funds? <laughs> the funds were deposited, but I don't believe the county has actually the commissioner's court. I don't believe has actually accepted the donation. Somebody deposited money with the county treasury. We have it as a payable due to somebody because there's no action from this. Body to have you checked the minutes to see if we accepted those funds? I'm sorry? Have you checked the minutes to yes. see if the court accepted so, those I, funds? I have no evidence at this point the court has then accepted. Then the only thing you do next week is have a formal acceptance by Commissioner's Court of those funds. Commissioners, again, even though we've, we've received money from the ESD, uh, we're not using those monies for this contract. Exactly. We're using the, the CO dollars for this contract. The, the, mm -hmm. That donation is separate. That's for the construction of the building. That's a separate uh, issue altogether. It is, even though it's related, it's it's still we have the funds available for the appropriation. That uh, donation is a separate separate funds. It should not have to play into the appropriation of these funds for this purpose. No, it's nothing different than we've done in the past. In here, we're looking at beginning the the the, the design of the building. Uh, we're utilizing our funds. It has nothing to do with the funds that we'll be receiving. We've been doing everything we can to do everything right. We believe that this is a a very very good project with partners, great partners. And we just want to get this moving forward. Uh, we have no problem addressing any issue. Uh, we're going to defer to legal at every point in time, the auditor's office, bond council, to us. We, we prefer to do it the right way. Um, I don't see the hindrance of the, uh, the certifying the funds for at least this step for us to be able to be able to move forward. That, I mean, I'm encouraging the court to consider a motion uh, for the approval of C1, A, and B. A and B. Second. Or CA. What, what kind of a contract do we have with the architects? What's the percentage or? Uh, it's traditional to, I, I don't remember the percentage. Do you, do you remember, Steve, or it's, Sergio? At 6.5%. 6.5%. Okay. <coughs> All right. Was there a motion? So move. And it said, those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chuy. Uh, let's move back. Pray. Item nine, our sheriff's office. Good day, Judge, Commissioners. Richard, as you know, 
Pinal County Sheriff's Office on behalf of our Sheriff uh, Guadalupe Lupe Trevino. Your item 9A, authorization to purchase seven cell phone line additions through the county's membership participation through the contract DIR SDD 1780 through uh, Sprint. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. On number two is the authorization and approval of the cell phone plan for the following. It's for the seven business advantage, 200 uh, unlimited text and data at 45.59 apiece, with uh, seven premium data for each phone at $10 apiece, total of seven at 389.13 uh, per month. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, item B, this is what we covered uh, last, uh, last week on Commissioner's Court goes hand in hand with the rebanding. It's presentation and discussion and authorization to submit the Motorola 800 Transition Administrator Waiver Privilege and Confidentiality Agreement as part of the 800 band reconfiguration with the authority for the county judge to sign the required documents subject to legal approval, which has been done and they have reviewed. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item C, under the Sheriff's Office of OSADEF uh, 1284, Count numbers, uh, number one is approval of the FY 2014 Overtime Program Agreement. It's investigation number SWTXS0910. Uh, Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. It's for the amount of 14000 I'm sorry. Under number two is the authorization to pay overtime reimbursements under the grant terms and conditions. Move for approval. Second. <coughs> Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Number three is the approval of certification of revenues as certified by our county auditor for the OSADIF agreement. And let's, do, let's cover both three and four. Those in move for approval and second. Three and four. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Judge Commissioners, thank you. Item 10, our health department. Uh, Mike Escalame from the health department. Mr. Levares is out of town this morning, sir. Uh, he asked me to present the following agenda item. Yes, On sir. agenda item 40838, requesting approval of the certification of revenue in the amount of uh, $89,642. Funds are from the Health and Human Services Commission, Medicaid Administrative Claiming Reimbursement. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. And number two, requesting approval to appropriate the MAC <coughs> budget in the amount of $89,642. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. There's no action on, on B1 and there's no action on C1. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Item 11, adult probation. Morning, Judge Commissioners. Paul Pettis, adult probation. Here on item 11A for the adult probation office, monitoring compliance for risk for high risk offenders grant, uh, asking for approval of item number one, approval to accept monitoring compliance for high risk offenders grant award number DJ 11A. 10-272-530101 in the amount of $40,083.64 from the Office of the Governor under the Edward Byrne Memorial Justice Assistance Grant Program for the period of October 1st, 2013 through September 30th, 2014. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Number two, approval for certification of revenues is certified by the County Auditor for the Monitoring Compliance for High-Risk Offenders Grant. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Number three, approval to appropriate funds from the monitoring compliance for high risk offenders grant in the amount of $40,083.64. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. And number four, authorization to pay overtime reimbursable under the grant terms and conditions. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. And item 12, our IT department. No IT. No IT today, okay. Then let's move on to item uh, 13, our elections office. Good morning again, Judge and Commissioners. Uh, while she's handing that out, I would just like to say uh, something regarding my open forum on the EIC, the Election Identification Certificate, just to point out that this Election Identification Certificate is only necessary if, in fact, a voter does not have one of the other seven acceptable forms of ID. 
This is not for everyone. This is only if they don't have a driver's license, if they don't have a Texas personal identification card, if they don't have a Texas concealed handgun license, a military identification card, and under that there are so many, uh, a citizenship certificate, a naturalization certificate, and of course a passport. So it's important to note that this EIC is free to a registered active voter if in fact they do not already possess one of the other forms of ID. And uh, while Commissioner's Court was going on, Commissioner uh, Joseph, I was uh, texting with Karina about your proposed idea, which I think is an excellent idea. And we're thinking of maybe uh, doing some sort of training for precinct representatives and department head representatives, and just let our Hidalgo County employee community know what exactly is going on, and that way anyone can answer a question when approached, whether it's at work or on a personal note. Right. So we will be uh, working on that to, to do something really quick. Okay. You know, Karina, it might be a good idea to dedicate one of those county connection articles around January or February so that we start educating the public on how to vote in March. Yes. It was already included in this past, and we will continue to include it, uh, getting ready, of course, for that ever important primary coming up. And so now to my item, uh, item 13A. Discussion, consideration, and action on proposed solutions to, once again, Senate Bill 100 from 2011, Senate Bill 1402 from 2009, as it affects potential changes to how elections are administered for political subdivisions in Hidalgo County relating to the adoption of election procedures necessary to implement the Federal Military and Overseas Empowerment Act. Now, this is something that had come to this court before and I have uh, handed you all, or uh, uh, Elvia has handed you some proposed options of which I have gone to your offices and either talked to you directly or members of your staff. Now, why am I uh, asking this court to take some very needed steps? Mainly because of the budget uh, circumstances that we find ourselves in. We can see that Commissioner uh, Joe Flores refers back to 2008. In 2008, my operating budget was m almost double what I have now. So from 2008, it has slowly gone down. And a very important question is, why was I able to manage, especially even numbered years, which are primary years? And my answer to that is because I had HAVA funding, which up to now had, has given this county over $3 million. That HAVA funding was able to pay for maintenance agreements, for equipment, for uh, various supplies that are necessary in relationship to elections, and now that money is no longer here. HAVA has, in fact, finished and no more grant money. So now I find myself coming upon a primary year in which, for the county, it is at a great expense. Keeping in mind that the county must pay for all of early voting for the primary and then the general election in uh, November. So with the very necessary cuts that are being done to everyone's budget, I am then asking that you take into consideration my option A. First of all, Senate Bill 100 says that during an even numbered year, the elections administrator may elect to not run any elections during the May general election cycle. Now, my recommendation is not that, because we also have, and Hidalgo County is the only county that has Senate Bill 1402 that was passed in 09, which says that any community can propose to their governing body by a mere 1% of the numbers of people who voted in their last general election, they may in fact petition their governing board to contract with the elections department to run their election. So because of Senate Bill 1402, I do not propose that we cut out running elections in May. So my option A is my recommendation for even and odd numbered election years, number one. In an even primary year, let's administer all full contracts during the May general election. Number two, in a non-primary year, we can go back to do full contract and lease. And then in November, <coughs> let's go back to only full contract. Why? Because of the costs that are incurred by the county in running lease elections. Also contract elections, but if we're trying to cut budget, this would be a step one to be able to take. 
The recommendation option B, which is not my recommendation, is we do not administer any elections as per Senate Bill 100. Again, keeping in mind that we do have Senate Bill 1402, that we need to, we cannot just say yes to some and no to others. But definitely we need to take into consideration leasing. Why? Because HAVA granted this county over $3 million. With those $3 million, we were able to purchase the voting equipment, which I have informed the, this court is now obsolete. If we continue to have grave wear and tear on the equipment, then we're going to be needing in, I'm thinking, four or five years to, to uh, replace this equipment by new equipment which will be very, very costly. So we can extend the life of these machines if in fact we choose to just run the full contract where everyone can share the cost, can share the machines, can share the cost of payroll, which is the highest cost to an election. And it would then give us, uh, because remember when we lease contracts, we do not share costs at all. So, those, that is my proposal. Proposal option C, of course, is to remain with the status quo, knowing that I would then more than likely have to come back to court and ask for an increase in my operating budget because once again, why have I been able to run primaries in the past? Because I have had that support and that supplement of funding from HAVA. So Maybe. we, I propose option A, B or C, okay. and I recommend it's A. On. Can you yes, summarize sir. option one? Just tell me what you're Yes, trying. sir. In a primary even-numbered year, let's go ahead and continue running those May elections that full contract with us. No lease. Okay. And then in a non-primary year, we can go ahead and do lease and full contract because keep in mind that Senate Bill 100 gave these political subdivisions the window to move to May odd or to November. And there are some that chose not to. And those are the ones that continue to lease the equipment in May. Then in November, let's just run full contract because in running full contract, we share the cost of the entire election, mainly the cost of workers, equipment, supplies, because we run all together in one ballot, in one group of machines, uh, and that helps the county curtail cost tremendously. So that's my option A and my recommendation. Questions? You're recommending both one and two? Option A, A. one, two, and three. three. To administer full contracts in May, in a non-primary year, administer full and lease, and in November, only full contract. But isn't uh, our intent when we talked about it before to have uh, the May elections moved to November. Yes, sir, but remember some political subdivisions chose not to. And they remained in May even numbered years and what happens is we run out of equipment because their election day finishes on Saturday runoff. and we have the runoff on Monday. And last primary I had to have a special request to the state to allow us to u clear up some of those machines which by law, they're supposed to remain as they are in case there are recounts and what have you. We had to clear up machines, reprogram, and have them ready. Aren't you making an argument for doing away with May elections? Well, only because Senate Bill 1402, I'm not making an argument to do away with them completely, but to have us run the full contract and not the lease. This past May 2012... The full contract means... That we run our people, we run it. That we run them. Okay. Yes, sir. That is what option A says. We run all elections in May, even numbered, no lease. We run all elections in November. What will the political subdivision do if they want to go on their own? That's exactly right. They would go on their own. They would lease from the vendor directly. The vendor would program for them. They would print their ballots, everything for them. But number two, you said you really didn't want to lease. In number money. two, we don't lease. Yes, sir. So option A is one, two, and three. One, two, and three. Move for approval. Second. <clears throat> Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. I will be writing the political subdivisions letter, a letter letting them know what was approved here today. And please know that if they call you they and you have a question. Like they did, uh, what? about two years ago. Yes, sir. They all called and, and, uh, and, and you know, rightly so. Everyone's budget is, is in the same position. 
but we need to look at, at where many, we stand. How many cities? Are, we're not talking school districts, only cities? Mm -hmm. No, school districts as well yeah. that choose to most, most run with us, but not all. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Valde, you want to take care of 12? Oh, Teresa. Uh, no. ju well, Judge, uh, Ms. Uh, Ms. Flores, just yes. one, if you'll indulge me one, one second. Judge, for item 12, we're just going to take no action on, on the IT. Okay. Okay? Very good, sir. Thank you, Ms. Flores. Okay, I'm sorry, okay. Teresa. Go uh, ahead. That's okay. Um, good morning. We have um, under item 14, letter A, Discussion approval of the Hidalgo County Head Start Program area distribution for 2013-24, and that's where our children are distributed, and that is a requirement of Head Start to have it approved every year, and administration recommends approval of the proposed um, distribution. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. B. <coughs> discussion approval of training and technical assistance, TNTA program plan. That is also a requirement, and uh, we list all the types of training that are being provided for staff and for policy council and parents. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item C, this discussion approval of the program information report, PIR, and that's the um, overall information related to the program that must be submitted to the Office of Head Start. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item D, discussion approval of bid award and contract to bidder meeting all specifications for the lease of classroom space in the following area. Bid number 2013-006-0906, classroom space in Westlaco area. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. E, discussion approval of memorandum of understanding MOU between Hidalgo County Head Start Program and Melody Kids Care. And these are for uh, free services. Move for approval. S second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. <coughs> Item F, requesting authority slash approval to purchase service with Time Warner Business Class through the Department of Information Resources contract number DIR. Uh, TEXANNG -E CTSA 0084 number one fiber dedicated internet access 50 by 50 MBPS with no installation charge hub um, site admin uh, for $1,824 monthly charge number two coax cable SOHO HSD 15 times uh, 15 by 2 MPB uh, S with no installation charge, 40 sites at $3,104 monthly charge. And number three, Coates ca uh, Cable, COHO HSD 35 by 5 MBPS, one site with no installation charge for $299.52. And Move this approval. particular contract Second. is recommended. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay. Um, and the last one is discussion, approval, and appointment of one community representative by each member of the Commissioner's Court to serve on the Hidalgo County Head Start Policy Council for a one-year term according to 45 CFR Chapter 13, 1304.50B, 1B7, beginning October 2013. And we have for um, all areas except uh, Commissioner Tito Palacios, and I understand he'll make a recommendation next week. And then on Commissioner Flores' uh, precinct, the person named last time uh, is not able to serve, and so um, he's needing to name uh, someone else. So you need precinct two and precinct three? Yes, and I think Mingo Villarreal. Mingo, what, uh, Mingo what's Villarreal. Name, Mingo? Becky, Rebecca, I guess, Villarreal. And uh, Precinct 2 Road? All right. You got mine right, Ms. Yes. Oh. Yes, we have all the others. Okay, need a motion to approve uh, Rebecca Villarreal to be a member approved. of the board? Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. 
Thank you very much. Thank um, you, ma'am. For your information, as a federally funded program, our contract starts in January and ends in December, so we are not affected by the shutdown. Okay. Okay. All right, next, uh, next item, uh, 15, facilities management. Judge Commissioner Daniel Flores, facilities management. Um, item 15A, request approval for the following of the following invoice ARB to be processed as a claim with authority for the county auditor treasurer to issue payment check after review auditing process procedures are completed by the county auditor. What we have, sir, was a, uh, we have an open PO with this vendor. Uh, we've been having uh, fire marshal inspections in our building. Uh, this uh, item was missed. It, uh, we have fire bottles on, on, on the contract, but this is a specific one that he asked for. Uh, an individual missed it, and we went ahead and ordered it, and, and we should have not with the vendor, and that's why we have a claim. Judge, we met with purchasing department reference this item, and I'm not sure if uh, they're going to be able to help us to pay this invoice. But we're, uh, we're trying to get it paid. All right. Any so other we love it. We've got to pay it. Any other questions? No. Sir. If not, I need a motion. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Item 16, planning. Morning, Judge Commissioners. Morning, Our Scene Planning Administrator. Um, first item is preliminary approval of variance request. Uh, Veda subdivision. It's a two lot subdivision located at ETJ of, of Edinburgh, and it has been considered by the city. Uh, the basic of the variance request is to allow the 50 foot frontage. It's a small track they're dividing into two to have a family kind of division. And our requirements call for 100 foot frontage. However, they're requesting the 50. We see no objection to it. They're complying with all the other requirements for preliminary approvals. So we are recommending preliminary approvals with the variance approval. request. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. And the next item is the Royal Value Phase 3 subdivision. This is 72 lot subdivision in continuation of the previous two phases. Um, they are requesting a variance. This is the development that's on Canton Road in Dillon. Um, basically, they've extended the road already at 24, 28. Because of the right-of-way requirements, it requires a 36, 40. However, they're requesting a variance to continue with the existing uh, county road section. There is a, a canal to the east side that dead ends the whole road there. So we don't see, we don't see a need for the wide, the 36-foot the wide road. And we've recommended approval in the previous phases and, and therefore recommend approval in this as well. Move for and, approval. And Second. it has gone through all the departments as well and the advisory board. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Uh, Preliminary <clears throat> approval of Contra Estates Unit Number Two Subdivision 64 uh, Lot Development. Uh, they're requesting preliminary approval, so they may uh, move forward with construction. The advisory board has approved it. De my department, other departments have also signed off on it and is ready for a commission court approval, so they may commence their construction. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Uh, final approval of Vientos Estate Subdivision. It's a 15 lot subdivision located on 22 and a half. Uh, they uh, have installed the septic tanks. They've complied with all the other departments. They have escrowed the monies for the 22 and a half road improvements. And everything is in order for the final approval. Did you say they don't Second. have to install septic tanks? No, they installed them already. Oh. They, on this one, I apologize, Judge. They have installed them, yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. They have installed them. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. And the next last is uh, Vista Ridge Acres Phase 4. This is a final approval with financial guarantee. On this development, they've constructed everything but the septic tanks. However, they are depositing or have deposited with the county uh, cash deposit of 40500 for 27 septic tanks. They have complied with the, all the other requirements. Everything else has been constructed, inspected by my office, and is in order for final approval. Advisory board has recommended final approval in my office as well. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you very much. Item 17, Precinct 2. Morning, Judge Commissioners. Uh, item 17A is uh, uh, requesting approval to purchase a tract of land known as Parcel 3 for the Thomas Road Project in Precinct 2. Uh, this item was brought to executive session September 11th, and the settlement agreement uh, has been submitted to your office. Mr. Fletcher. We don't have it yet. It was submitted yesterday to... Uh, did you get it? Well, it's been submitted, so if we can approve it, subject to you. So it's coming? Receiving it. it, yeah. it 
It should Mo be in your office. Move for approval. Second. Any of those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you, Judge Commissioner. Thank you, sir. Precinct three. Good, Good morning, morning, Judge Commissioner. Commissioners. Uh, morning, sir. Item 18A, requesting approval to accept Hot Rod Lane through right of way donation deeds. Uh, these people were uh, couldn't ha uh, couldn't have a way out there, Judge, and they needed uh, they were landlocked. Then they needed a road, so everybody donated, and the right of way took uh, action on it, and they have all the paperwork done. Do we have appraisal reports, Mingo? On those? Yes, sir. Appraisal reports that have been submitted to. Yeah, they do. Post it right away uh, has everything in order, right? Because yeah, purchasing needs them, and we need them in order to okay. account for the, the cost of the donation. Come on. I let them know. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. On item B, uh, no action is going to be taken, Judge, because uh, Steve Crane is going to look into it. Thank you, sir. Thank yes. You. Item 19, budget. Morning, Judge Commissioners. 19. Uh, A will be no action. Uh, Sergio Cruz, Department of Budget Management. Uh, item 19B, uh, one and one is uh, approval of 2013 appropriation of funds for the District Clerk Record Management and Preservation Fund in the amount of $50,795.23. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. <coughs> Judge Commissioners, on item 19B2. A and B, we're requesting appropriation of funds in the total amount of one million one hundred eighty-seven dollars and two hundred twenty dollars, two hundred twenty dollars for the 10th Street expansion project. We're requesting approval of this appropriation uh, subject to the auditor auditor certification of funds. Move for approval. Second. Uh, uh, are you Favorite. requesting approval of two one, but two A or A and or B? Two B only. B. Well, it'll only be for B. Uh, so the auditor. Okay. Yeah, because I have not certified those revenues, Judge. Uh, we discussed earlier had to do with the. Uh, if we may clear the issue, I know that the uh, legal counsel was handled, uh, handed over the two interlocal agreements as well as a letter from the city of Edinburgh. I, again, I have no problem with, with the process whatsoever. I just only hope that the, our county attorney and the auditor can get together so that we can certify these funds and move this project forward. <clears throat> and I have reviewed those interlocals, and the, the amended and restate interlocal does, does address uh, what is addressed in the letter. <coughs> so we're good to go? We're good to go. So, so Mr. Palacio, at what point, if, if legal is telling you he's reviewed documents, he's good to go, what, what else do you need? What else would you need to certify? Well, that, that has to do with the, uh, the 10th Street extension. Yes, sir. And we discussed that earlier, that on the 10th, 10th uh, Street extension, we're going to need the letter. But we're trying to clear the receivable commission, as we indicated before. Yes, sir. Whether or not the city is going to pay the, the right. receivable. But once that is clear, then uh, I'm good to go. Well, in this fact, in this case, that's what I'm, I'm referencing, the 200 locals and the letter from the city stating that they will compensate. Now, obviously, they're not required to. So my question will be, what, why does that hinder us from moving forward if legally they don't have to, yet they're honoring in, in a letter? Can we just move forward? Uh, well, I haven't seen, seen the letter, but we discussed with the city manager earlier the receivable, and he's yes, saying that, that he's going to pay. And that was the issue that was that was pending. Right. So would the letter be suffice enough to certify revenues? Yeah, I haven't seen the letter, but let me review okay. it and see what it okay. says. So do you mind if we approve subject to your review of the letter? And, okay. Yeah, but uh, like I said, I won't be able to certify the revenues until later on, but we are approving B subject to Correct. the certification. Correct. Appropriate subject to your certification. Yeah. Okay. Approve B only. All right. For the record, Commissioner, we, we do have a motion a, and a second on, on B, do we not? All right. Yes. For approval, those B. in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. On item 19B3B would be approval of 2013 appropriation of funds in the amount of $78,000. This would be for the architecture services for the uh, EMS uh, building. Uh, also, if we can have this approved subject to the auditor certification of yes, funds. And, and I believe Bond Council said they'll be submitting a letter today. Correct. Uh, Just restating what he's already mentioned here. So we already have those statements made in court. So I believe they should suffice. But however, he will. I'll uh, submit a letter to the auditor's office. Yeah. Now, that one is going to be uh, subject to the getting the bond council's letter. Yes, sir. Yeah. And he, they'll get it today. We'll forward it to you, but we'll make okay. it subject to your review and approval. Well, uh, B, only 3B, right? Correct. B. Okay. 3B. I'll move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, Judge Commissioners. Thank you, sir. 
Good morning, Good morning. Commissioner's Court. Darlene Bencourt from Martha Salazar. For item 20A1, A, B, and C, we're requesting presentation with concurrence by Hidalgo County Purchasing Agent, the Budget Officer, and County Auditor for approval of orders for all general fund budgets and any other applicable budgets for the following A. A cutoff date for the submission of requisitions by Friday, October 18, 2013, for all goods or services that require sufficient time to order and receive prior to December 31, 2013. For major purchases including vehicles, furniture, etc. Requesting approval. So move. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you. Item B is cutoff date for submission of requisition by Friday, December the 6th on goods and services that require sufficient time to order and receive prior to December 31st or day-to-day -day purchases, items necessary for daily operations? Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. And item C is approval to notify all elected offices and departments that open purchase orders as of 12-31-13, for which there is no proper invoice and physical receipt of goods or services will be charged to the 2014 budget. There is a typo on the agenda. It should read 2014 budget. Under item C. Uh, I'm sorry, you, you're trying to correct what? I'm trying to correct, I need approval for this item, but it should be, the last sentence should read, will be charged to 2014 budgets. All right. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Judge. Item. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Judge Commissioners, that action item that you just uh, acted on is important. Uh, because if, if it is charged to the 2014 budget, then we may have a situation, again, it would be just subject to those that it was charged to, but you could have a situation where that department could come back to the budget office and say, well, we didn't anticipate that affecting our 2014 budget, and so we may or may not fall short in certain line items. So again, that action item there, uh, and we'll work with purchasing with respect okay. to that notice to the uh, departments and officials that they need to do their due diligence uh, to close out uh, all their purchase orders for uh, fiscal year or calendar year 2013. But I think the issue there about the, is the receipt and the invoice you know, for those goods. So exactly. the, receipt and the, and the receipt of the goods is not 1231? Exactly. has to be charged to the next year. Exactly, Mr. Ferraz, and that's my point, that they need to do their due diligence in order to make sure that the goods are received and or services are rendered this year. If not, their 2014 is affected, which would then cause issues on our end right. because well, it affects next year's budget. So we'll, we'll, do, we'll do what we need to do to make sure that they do their due we, diligence. We did, uh, we did move up the date for the major purchases. Originally last year, I believe, and the years before, it was the last week of October. We moved it up to the second week of October to give everyone enough time to be able to do their major purchases. Moving on to the next item, item B, Precinct 3, 1, A, presentation for consideration, discussion, acceptance, and approval of an amendment to the current service agreement between Hidalgo County LNG Engineering for construction materials testing to revise Exhibit C to include geotechnical engineering services. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item B2, BB, presentation for consideration, discussion, acceptance, and approval of work authorization number two with an estimated cost of $11,618.96 for Harachinas Road CR 1400 Project Phase 1 with LNG Laboratories to provide engineer services to Precinct 3. Move for approval. Oh, second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Moving on to item, item for Precinct 4, B, item B, requesting approval of supplemental agreement number two to work authorization number one and increase amount of $20,020 for a current contract with LNG for Jaws Pacific FM 1925 from Kenyon Road to FM 907 Alamo Road. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. And item D1 is for Colonia Access Program Precinct 4. We're requesting approval to reject all bids submitted for road and drainage construction for Trenton Terrace Subdivision 
as bids received were higher than the budgeted amount for this project. Move for approval. Yeah. Those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Balde, do we have? Yes, we do have uh, a closed session, Judge. All right. Uh, this time, I need a motion to proceed to executive session pursuant to 551071 and 072 of the Government Code. So moved. Move for Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Valde. Thank you, Judge Commissioners. Uh, item 22A, uh, there is no action to be taken today at real estate. Item 22B, pending our potential, there is no action as well. Item 22C, EEOC charge 451-2012-01549 and EEOC charge number 451-2013-00286 uh, Severo Ochoa. Uh, there is no action today. Uh, item 22D, uh, CL12. Uh, 1006 F Maria Isabel Martinez and Hector Javier Loredo versus County of Hidalgo Judge Commissioners uh, I do want to disclose to the court that we have a ten tentative settlement agreement uh, contingent on court action uh, this afternoon uh, the total settlement amount is $50,000 and uh, for disclosure purposes uh, the $50,000 uh, is uh, Maria Isabel Martinez in the amount of $25,000 and Hector Javier Loredo in the amount of $25,000. Uh, against uh, the county. Uh, and so I'm asking the court if uh, to take action as everything is in order and this will uh, bring this matter to closure. Move for approval. Well, Second. is it 50 half and half or? F yes, it's half and half. Yes, oh, sir. Yeah. Gotcha. And no. I, I'm sorry, Judge. And Mr. Ufrasio, uh, again, for court disclosure. Uh, there are uh, part of the uh, settlement proceeds uh, involve uh, our, our insurance carrier dollars. So okay. we'll work out the uh, arrangements on payment uh, and we'll make sure that your office is uh, well aware of those arrangements. Judge, I'm Second. sorry. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, item 22E, claim of Deborah, uh, De uh, Deborah Puente, Judge Commissioners. I'd like settlement authority to make an offer in the amount of $50,000 in settlement. Fifty dollars. I'm sorry. Fifty dollars. My apologies. <laughs> My apologies. Fifty dollars. Those Second. in favor say aye. Uh, aye. Motion carries. And item 22F, claim of uh, Marta Bar Barreda, Judge Commissioner, like similar authority to make an offering the amount of one thousand three hundred ninety-three dollars and ninety-five cents. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 That it, brother? Yes, sir. There is no further action to be taken. Do you have a meeting set up in, in Austin? 
No, uh, there, uh, uh, talk about with uh, Mr. Taylor? Right. No, that uh, meeting did not, uh, he finally got a hold of the uh, uh, right individual. Okay. Uh, but that meeting has not been uh, set yet. I need a motion to adjourn. Uh, judge Commissioners, vote. before we adjourn, before we adjourn, Monica, before we adjourn, Judge Commissioners, uh, we, we, Monday, next week. No, well, no, that would be. Can we do it Monday or no? N I believe that the conference starts Monday. Tuesday, no? I think it starts. Or oh, is it Tuesday? Yeah. Oh, well then. Monday's fine. It's a conference for what? Monica, uh, the conference? Sure Continuing yeah. education. Engineering? Uh, Continuing. Oh, the CEUs, the Continuing Education Units. Uh, it's in Galveston. I don't have to go to them. Uh, okay, but I mean. Uh, my there. position doesn't require it, I don't think. Is that a quorum? Are we able to do Thursday? Uh, Judge, I, I, I'll, I'll check on your hours. All right. I'll check on your hours. But so uh, do, we, do we schedule a Monday or a, th or a Thursday afternoon meeting? Yeah. That'd be better Monday. Huh? Monday? I don't have, I, I can't think of anything that I've got. So. Get it out of the way Monday. Okay, then we'll, okay, then Monica, we'll schedule a 9 and 9.30 Monday uh, court session and drainage district. Okay. Thank you, Judge Commissioners, and we I'm sorry, Judge. We have a motion and a second to adjourn. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, gentlemen.